Hi, I'm Ken, and welcome to my channel, Endurance Sweat. It's been a while since I've posted on YouTube. I was training hard outside and on Trainer Road for a six-day epic ride in the French Alps. But now I'm back on Swift and getting set to begin Academy Road. In this video, I'll be discussing ERG mode to do those Academy Road workouts. The annual Swift Academy is starting again with Academy Road September 12th to October 9th. And then later this fall, Academy Try, and then Academy Run early next year. In this video, I'll be focusing on Academy Road. Again, it starts September 12th and runs till October 9th. Academy Road consists of six structured workouts, plus a baseline ride to test your starting performance and a finish line ride to see how much improvement you've made through Academy Road. And of course, the orientation rides have already started and they run right through until September 11th. Academy Road is great for anyone who's returning to Swift after a summer of road riding, someone who's new to structured interval training, and someone who wants to take their Swift experience to a higher level. I say it's great for anyone who rides Swift. I really want to focus this video on whether you should use ERG or Sim mode to do the Swift Academy workouts or any workout on Swift. I'll explain what ERG and Sim mode are and the benefits of riding in ERG mode or in Sim mode for a workout. But first I should say that ERG and SIM mode are only available with smart trainers. That is, trainers where the SWIFT program can control the resistance on your trainer. So they're not available on dumb trainers. That is, trainers that use a resistance unit, whether it be a fluid, a fluid resistance, magnetic resistance, or an air resistance that's dependent on how fast your back wheel is turning. You can still do the Swift workouts on a dumb trainer, and you'll still get the benefits of the Swift Academy. In fact, all the workouts that I do on Trainer Road, I still do on my Kirk Kinetic dumb trainer. But this video is for those who are using a smart trainer and wondering whether they should use ERG mode or SIM mode. So let's say you have a smart trainer. Let's talk about SIM mode first. SIM mode is also called resistance mode or incline mode or slope mode. So it sometimes gets confusing, but all of them mean sim mode. And the trainer resistance is dependent upon your aerodynamic drag in the program, the rolling resistance in the program, the height and weight of the rider and the bike, the road incline and drafting. The power output is dependent on the gear that you choose and your cadence. And it simulates rather well riding outdoors. And it's the normal mode when you're riding on Swift. So whether you're doing a solo ride or a group ride, for example, it's the only mode available when not doing a workout in Swift, but it is optional for workouts. Oh, I should mention that when you're doing a workout, the trainer resistance is not dependent on the road incline or drafting. And that's true whether you're riding sim mode or erg mode. Now let's talk about ERG mode. It's only available for workouts on Swift. The trainer resistance is automatically adjusted so you maintain the target power. If you pedal faster, the trainer resistance will decrease so you maintain target power. And if you decrease your cadence, the trainer resistance will go up so you'll stay on target power. Similarly, if you change to a harder or easier gear, the trainer resistance will decrease or increase so you maintain target power. And the trainer resistance is not affected by the road incline or drafting, as I mentioned earlier. So here are some of the advantages of riding in ERG mode when you're doing a Swift Academy workout or any workout on Swift. It automatically keeps you on the target power. You do not have to concentrate on the target power output. All you have to do is pedal. And there are no shortcuts. You must complete the full interval on the target power. The one thing you have to be aware of in ERG mode is something called the spiral of death. If the target power increases dramatically, say you're riding at 125 watts and the target power immediately goes up to 250 watts, well, the trainer resistance is going to increase dramatically and you might find it hard to turn over the pedals. And the slower you pedal, the more the resistance will go up on the trainer to try to maintain target power. And the resistance can get so hard that you can't turn over the pedals anymore. And that's the spiral of death. The trick here is to increase your cadence just before the target power goes up. 
or switch to the sim mode for those intervals where there's a big change in the power output, especially for short intervals of 15 to 30 seconds when the power output is ramping up and then dramatically down and back up. In that case, you might find it beneficial to use sim mode. So let's talk about sim mode. Now, sim mode requires more skill and practice to stay on target. And that can be a good thing because it teaches you to maintain your pacing. And you might need that skill when you're riding outside. On the other hand, when you're using sim mode, you can slack off or you can overdo it. And either of those is a workout fail. The key here in the workout is to stay on target power. Now the sim mode, because you have to concentrate to stay on, on target power, you have to focus. And sometimes that'll make the workout seem to pass faster. And riding in sim mode, even in workouts, is more like in the real world. So if that's important to you, ride in sim mode. So here's my bottom line. Use erg mode as the default for swift workouts. It automatically keeps you on the target power and increases the likelihood of a successful workout. You don't have to focus, just keep pedaling. But I say give sim mode a try for part or all of a workout, especially now during these orientation workouts. And sim mode is probably the best for short, high power interval sets. So if you're doing a workout and part of that workout is short, high power interval sets, why switch to sim mode? And then when that part of the workout is done, go back to erg mode. And here are two workouts. These are actually workouts that will be coming up in the Swift Academy. In the first workout, aerobic conditioning, you'll want to stay in erg mode for the whole workout. Whereas in workout six, there are a number of short, high power interval sets at the beginning of the workouts. For those sets, probably you'll want to switch to sim mode, and then for the remainder of the workout, switch to erg mode. Now, if you haven't done a swift workout or used erg mode in the past, you might be wondering, well, how do I get my trainer into erg mode? So I'll go over putting your trainer into erg mode, whether you're doing a group or solo workout. Now, you can select to do the workout in erg mode or sim mode, and you can make that selection before joining the workout. First off, when you select to do a group workout, either on the companion app or on the Swift app, there is no option here to select whether you're doing the workout in sim mode or in erg mode. So before you actually join the workout, click on workouts, or indeed you can click on any workout. And then at the bottom of the next screen, you'll see there's a radio button for use erg mode. And then when you've clicked that radio button, you'll be using erg mode. So click back and then join the group workout. Now let's discuss how you select erg mode or sim mode after you've joined the workout. And this applies to both before the workout starts. So you've joined the workout, you're in the corral, but the workout hasn't started and during the workout itself. You can bring up the action bar and there'll be an action bar icon to switch erg on and off or you can use the companion app to switch erg mode on and off. So if you bring it up and it says erg is on, you can click it and that'll put you in incline or sim mode. Or if it's in incline mode, then you can click that icon and it will go on to erg mode. So you have a couple of ways of enabling and disabling erg mode during a workout, either from the action bar or from the companion app. Now, when you're doing the workout in erg mode, and you bring up the action bar, you'll see there's a couple of arrows or triangles, and those you can use to increase or decrease the target power. And you can do the same on the companion app by clicking on the minus or plus signs next to the bias. So if you think the workout is just a little too easy, you can increase the target power, or if you think it's just a little bit more than you're able to do that particular day, why you can decrease the target power by using these arrow buttons, either in game on the action bar or on the companion app. Now, when you're doing the workout in sim mode or part of the workout in sim mode and you bring up the action bar, you'll notice that there's a couple of additional arrows. And those are used to increase or decrease the incline. And when you click on those buttons, you'll notice there's a bar that comes up next to your power output. And there's an orange bar that goes up and down. And that shows how much you've increased the workout incline. Now, I should take a moment to 
explain what this incline is about. Now, conceptually, I think of this incline in two different ways. First, let's think about doing this workout outside. If the road incline goes up and you're maintaining the same cadence, why, you might have to put it in an easier gear to keep the same power output when the road goes up. Or alternatively, if the slope of the road goes down, you might have to pedal faster to keep the same power output. So this is similarly in Swift. If you increase or decrease this, the incline, it's like increasing or decreasing the slope of the road. Another way to think about it conceptually is if you increase the incline, it's like putting your bike in a harder gear, in a higher gear, without actually shifting. Or if you decrease the incline, it's like putting your bike in an easier gear without actually shifting. So you can think about it in both those different ways. But this only applies to sim mode. Similarly, on the companion app, you'll notice on the button to switch back and forth from erg to incline mode, if you're in incline mode on either side of that button, there are down and up arrows. And again, these are only in sim mode. And you can use these down and up arrow buttons to increase or decrease the incline. It's like increasing or decreasing the gradient of the road you are doing the workout on, if you are doing it outside, for example. Or alternately, it's like using a harder or easier gear. And now I'll demonstrate these concepts while doing the Swift Academy orientation ride. So now I'm going to sign up for an orientation ride. So I'll click on events and there it is, the orientation ride, and I'll click on it and I can register or sign up for it by clicking that plus sign. You'll notice here there is no opportunity to join in the ERG or in the SIM mode. And I'll show you how to do that before you join the event later. I'm just going to leave it unchecked right now, and I'm going to bring up the companion app. So we can also sign up for the orientation ride on the companion app. We'll click on events or tap on events and then scroll down. And there's one for women only. Here's the orientation ride and I'll tap on it. Uh, again, you'll see there's no place on this screen to determine whether you'll be starting that event in ERG or SIM mode. But I'm going to sign up for the event and I'll tap on the plus sign and now I'm signed up for that event. Now to predetermine whether you'll start in ERG or SIM mode, go back to the game screen and you can click on any workout. But we'll scroll over and we'll click on workouts. And you see here at the bottom of the screen, it says use ERG mode. So if you click on that radio button, why when you start up the orientation ride, you will be starting in ERG mode. If you unclick it, then when you start the orientation ride, you'll be starting in the SIM mode. Now I'm going to click on orientation ride. And it says here, start the ride. So I'll I'll join the ride. And you can see the ride hasn't started yet. It starts in 5 minutes and 49 seconds. Now after I've joined the ride, I can toggle ERG mode off and on. On the game screen, if I bring up the action bar, then here it shows ERG mode is off. And I can click here to turn it on. And now if I bring up the action bar, you'll see erg mode is on. Similarly, in the companion app, you can see there's a, you can see that there is a button where it says erg is on. If I tap that, it shows incline. When it shows incline, that means you're in the sim mode. And if I tap it again, I'll be in erg mode. So you can use the companion app to toggle ERG mode off and on before the event starts and even during the event. Or you can bring up the action bar again to toggle ERG mode 
off, and on. And we'll start the workout in the erg mode. So we'll leave it there until the ride starts. We're just about ready to start this workout. And recall that I'm in erg mode. Again, if I bring up that, if I bring up the action bar, it shows erg is on. Okay, let's start riding. And since I'm in erg mode, my trainer will adjust the resistance on my pedals so I stay on target. If I pedal faster, I'll notice the resistance goes down to stay on target. If I slow my cadence, why the resistance will go up, but I'll still stay on target. So all I have to do is pedal. Now I'm going to switch to sim mode. I'll do it with the action bar. I'll click erg is on. And now you see erg is off. So now I have to focus and concentrate. And by increasing or decreasing my cadence or by changing gears, I'll attempt to stay on target. Some would say that this is more realistic, like if you were on the road, where you have to adjust your cadence and gears. And that is true. And it's also more engaging because you really do have to focus and pay attention. But the downside is that sometimes you can stray off the target power and then you're not getting the full benefit of the workout. Okay, I'm going to switch back to erg mode. And now erg is on. And whatever my pedal cadence or gear is, my trainer resistance will adjust automatically to keep me on target or thereabouts. Now, one thing I might want to mention as I start this next interval is that when you're doing a workout, either in sim mode or in erg mode, so both modes. The slope on the swift road has no effect on your trainer resistance. So I'm up at 11% here and it didn't change the resistance at all. In erg mode Your trainer continues to manage the resistance to stay on the target power. And even in sim mode, where you're manually staying on power by adjusting your cadence or gears, you will not feel the effect of changes in the swift road or incline while doing a workout. Now, one thing I just noticed is that my heart rate and effort are displayed in the graph at the bottom of the screen. And usually you can toggle that off and on by pressing the letter G on your keyboard. But that doesn't seem to work for a workout mode. It seems it's always displayed. Now my power lever is going to jump from 195 to 220. And in erg mode, I suggest just before it changes, you pick up your cadence. Because as that resistance jumps, you might find there's an inclination for your cadence to naturally 
slow down initially. And when your cadence slows down, the resistance on the trainer will go up to maintain the target power level. And that resistance can get so high that you have trouble turning over the pedals altogether. In extreme situations, you won't be able to turn over the pedals at all. And that's called the spiral of death. Your pedaling will come to a halt. So when the power levels go up in a workout while you're in erg mode, I suggest you increase your cadence just before that change in power level. And it's probably also a good idea even if you're in sim mode. Now for this next set, which involves two minutes at 170 and 30 and then 15 or 30 seconds at 255. I'm going to switch to sim mode. So on the companion app, tap right in the middle of that bar near the bottom of the screen where it says ergon. And now you can see that I'm in sim or incline mode where I have to adjust my cadence or gears to stay on target. One thing you'll notice where it says incline, there are up and down arrows next to the side of it. If you want to change back and forth from erg mode to sim mode or incline mode, you tap in the middle of that button. But if you tap on either side, you're increasing or decreasing the incline. Okay, so now I'm in sim mode and I'm in the erg mode, sim mode, and now I have to crank up my cadence to get back on target. And I've got to focus here to stay on target. So if I tap on either side of that incline bar, it will increase or decrease the resistance on my trainer. Uh, there's two ways that I think about this. One way to think about it is if you are doing this workout outside and the grade of the road went up. So to stay on your power, you could slow down your cadence. Or if you were on the road and the incline went down, you'd have to increase your cadence to stay on power level. So think about it as the incline of the road changing. Another way that I've heard people talk about it is going up is like putting your, your bike in a bigger gear or going down is putting your bike in a smaller gear. Conceptually both work. Okay, now we're going to go up in power and I'm going to increase my cadence just before the change. And in this case, I have to change my gear also. But you can see in sim mode, it's a lot more challenging me, challenging for me to keep my power on target. But the discipline to do that is not necessarily bad. In its own right, that's a matter of controlling your output, which is a 
in itself is a good skill to learn. Now I'm still in sim mode. I'm going to tap on that up arrow for the incline. And you'll notice when I do that, there's a bar next to the center display where my power output is just shown. That pops up when I do that. And you can see as I increase it or decrease, there's an orange bar that goes up and down. Okay, I'm going to switch back to erg mode now. So I tapped in the middle of that bar and now I'm back in erg mode. So now I just have to pedal. I don't have to concentrate as much. What I would encourage you to do is during the orientation rides, uh, do part of the ride in erg mode, but, but also do part of the ride in sim mode. So you gain experience in both modes. And now my target power level is going to jump from 170 to 255. So just before it changes, I'm going to increase my cadence. So I'm going to increase my cadence now. And that helps me adapt to the change in the trainer resistance. And now for the cool down portion of the inter of the orientation ride. Anyway, I hope you found this demonstration of erg and sim modes for workouts and in particular for the upcoming Academy Road to be helpful. Train hard and have fun. And I'd like to conclude this video by saying, if you Swift, you've got to do the Swift Academy Road. It's a great way to get back into Swift if you've been riding on the road during the summer. It's a terrific introduction to structured interval workouts, and it's a way to train hard and have fun.